And that actually brings me to the topic I kind of wanted to share with you, which is separation as a way into unity. I'm talking not about politics or anything. I'm talking about a direct spiritual path, a practice. So sometimes, I mean, there's many different direct paths, angles, gateways, and sometimes they'll share something that's more, has, has some separation elements in it. Like, I'm not this, I'm not that. And I've personally found that I am not this, I'm not that approach to be highly effective. But sometimes making these distinctions, it sounds like we're saying, uh, like there's a, a truth and there's a non-truth, or there's a, a reality and there's an illusion, or there is a, a right and a wrong almost, spiritually speaking or correct and incorrect. Um, but really, just see the separation as a way into unity. And I'll explain a little bit what I mean by that. The thing is, unity is simply the state of existence, the state of life as it is. There's no way around it. There's no way to argue with it. There is only one. So no practice can undo that. You've been conditioned by all the elements that you've associated with for all your life, all the filters, all the objects that you filtered your sense of existence, your sense of being through, that has produced the illusory feeling or the feeling of the illusion of separation being real. And it doesn't really matter what you do at this point when this is already the case, when you already feel separation, when you believe in separation, then you know, it doesn't really matter whether you practice unity or separation. And also it doesn't matter from the point of view of not being able to change the actual structure of reality, which is unity. So you can practice all kinds of separations, seemingly separation inducing practices, and it wouldn't make any difference in the unity and the oneness and the one that this all is appearing as. Ultimately, the absolute one is realized and greater and greater unity is experienced and felt through for example the practice of separating yourself out from everything that you can experience right now this self the let's say true self or you can call it mind space or you can call it awareness you can call it being you can call it i am you can call it that which you are whatever that is right now that has been infiltrated it has collapsed itself around form and form exists within the dream of imagination within labels within concepts within descriptions it has therefore spatial elements temporal elements and because the true self which is absolute one formless infinite indescribable free freer than space but in some senses, it's like space, but it's even freer than space itself. You are even freer than space itself. That which you are, total unity, has been infiltrated by thoughts, sense perceptions, stories, names, filters, spatial and temporal realities or dimensional experiences. And you've been associating with those elements for so long that it has become challenging for most of us to kind of, in a sense, keep a quiet, empty, clear mind that is transparent to the natural state of this formless, space-like, but truly ultimately beyond space, existence, awareness, being, self. And so, again, you can't really separate anything out from anything. That's just more illusion. So it doesn't really matter. You've lived your whole life in illusion. So don't worry about trying to mimic unity in your spiritual practices when there's very effective spiritual practices, very direct spiritual practices available to you that can actually tangibly, pragmatically give you direct experience of oneness. But the practice sounds like separation. And in many ways, this does mimic politics, like not being able to see past the service, thinking we choose for unity, but really choosing separation and thinking that that which brings unity is bringing separation. So it's, it's a little related but I won't go into that now.